Now, good morning and welcome to my series here where I'll be taking you through qualitative analysis, the organic uh, chemistry part. Now, I want to mention here that uh, as far as your practicals are concerned, um, we are going to have, or we are going to test for four the four homologous series that uh, we, we, we so four homologous series that we've looked at. We do have the alkenes, we do have the alkenes and alkynes. These are unsaturated hydrocarbons. We do also have the alkanones, that's the ROH, and we also have the alkanoic acids. Now, as I take you through this, I want you to be careful with uh, one. Be careful with the way we represent each of these homologous series. And number two, I want you to look at the reagents, uh, the reagents that we use in the organic uh, uh, chemistry particles, the reagents. And of course, not just the reagents, but how do these reagents behave with each of the four homologous series. So very fast, I want to take you through the first one here, and I'll talk about the alkenes. I'm talking to about the alkenes here. Now, as far as the alkenes are concerned, how do we represent the alkenes? The alkenes will be presented by the formula that is the way we represent the alkenes. As you can see, they are saturated. They are saturated. As you can see, between the two carbons here, uh, between the carbons, we have single bonds. So, uh, alkenes basically have that one there. Let me look at, let me go through the uh, their properties, their properties, we can look at the first property here, that they burn with a blue flame. They burn with a blue flame. They burn with a blue flame. However, it's important to know that this one, these are short chained. These this, this are short chained. Um, the long chained. The long chained the long chained alkenes bonds with a yellow suited frame a yellow uh, suited frame it is important to note that they bond with a yellow uh, suited frame of course we explain this with the fact that uh, when the carbon hydrogen ratio increases uh, what happens is that we may have incomplete combustion that brings about the yellow uh, suited frame that's what we're talking about now, uh, again, we can also mention about them here that they are insoluble in water. They are insoluble in water. They are insoluble in water. It is important to mention that. They are insoluble in water. They are insoluble in water. In other words, we can say they are non-polar. They are non-polar. Now, let's get to the second one here, and I'm going to look at the alkenes and alkynes here these ones are unsaturated unsaturated uh, unsaturated how do we represent the alkenes and alkynes now the unsaturated alkenes here of course we're going to have c double bond c here and of course we're going to have that one there the alkynes will be C triple bond C here, and you're going to have a single bond and a single bond there. So this is the way we are going to represent them. That is the way we are going to represent them. Now, very fast, let's also look at how the few chemical properties of these. Now, uh, the alkynes here, I want to mention here, number one, that uh, as far as their burning is concerned, they burn with a yellow uh, suited frame. A yellow suited frame. It's important to mention that. They burn with a yellow uh, suited frame with the same reason that the carbon-hydrogen ratio is higher and therefore that's why they're going to burn with a yellow suited frame. Now for the alkynes of course you may expect them to burn with even more suited frame uh, because of the high carbon-hydrogen ratio uh, uh, compared to the alkenes. Now number two here, they decanalize. They are going to decolorize. They are going to uh, decolorize acidified potassium magnet seven. Uh, they are going to decolorize. 
acidified uh, potassium manganese 7. Very important, this one alkenes do not. Um, maybe the other one also we can talk about the bromine water. They decolorize the yellow bromine water. They decolorize yellow bromine or water. They decolorize yellow uh, bromine or water. They decolorize yellow bromine water here. Now, uh, it's important maybe to mention here that uh, 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 potassium magnesium 7 is normally purple. And remember here, every time we are presenting this, every time we are writing the observations, when we are, we are using colored uh, uh, reagents, we must, we must mention the original, for example, purple acidified potassium magnesium 7 turns colorless. That is the original and the color after. Now, uh, let me also mention something here. So you can just uh, um, uh, just, just remember the two here, uh, the acidified potassium magnesium 7 and bromine water here. Now, then maybe you can also mention here that the alkenes and alkynes, the unsaturated here, uh, the, the, the alkenes, if I talk about the alkenes and alkynes here, uh, we can say they are, they are uh, insoluble in water again. They are insoluble in water. In other words, they are non-polar. They are non-polar. You can say they are non-polar. Mm, they are non-polar. They cannot form hydrogen bonds uh, with water. That's why maybe they may not be able uh, to dissolve uh, in water. Now, let me also, uh, maybe, let me just get to the other one here and we talk about the alkanols. Now, the alkanols will be represented by the ROH. The ROH. The ROH. Remember, uh, uh, the general formula of an alkanol is normally CN, uh, H, um, this is normally CN, H, uh, 2N plus 1, and then OH. And therefore, the CN, H2N here will be represented by the H. It will be represented by uh, the H. Therefore, we know the ROH. That's what we're talking about. Now, let me mention, let me, let's uh, look at maybe the alkanols. Uh, number one, they burn with a blue frame. A blue frame just like the alkanes, the short chain alkanes. However, it's also may, may be important to mention that it is possible for long chain again alkanols uh, to burn with again uh, a yellow uh, flame. Now, um, as far as the reagents are concerned here, we've got to talk about the acidified. Uh, they are going to decolorize. They are going to decolorize here. They are going to decolorize. Um, they are going to decolorize um, purple acidified acidified uh, potassium manganese 7. They are going uh, to decolorize purple acidified potassium manganese 7 here. And we can see also this one here has been decolorized by the alkanes. Now, one special property about these alkanols here is that they turn, they are going to turn orange acidified, acidified uh, potassium dichromate. They are going to turn orange acidified potassium dichromate to green, to green. Uh, very important. And this one here being a special, this one has a special property of alkanols. And therefore, we can easily use potassium dichromate to test for alkanols. You can see this one is a special case uh, the, in that uh, uh, the alkynes may not decolorize this and the alkanes, but the, the, the alkanols will do. Therefore, if you, I tell you to uh, test for ROH, you can simply go for the acidified potassium dichromate and try to put it there. Uh, warm it and see whether it turns green. If it turns green, that may confirm the ROH. Now, it's also important maybe to mention here that ROH are soluble, are soluble in water, are soluble in water. In other words, uh, we can say they are polar. Mm. They are actually polar. Mm. They are actually polar. That is what we are talking about. They are polar. 
and that's the thing. Now uh, let's get to the the fourth one here. In the fourth one here, we look at the alkanoic acids. Uh, our fourth uh, homologous series here, and you see again uh, what we're talking about here. Now, um, so we can mention about the the fourth group here. This is alkanoic acids. And the alkanoic acids. Now, alkanoic acids um, will be represented. Alkanoic acids will be represented by R, a C. O, O, H, uh, R, C, double bond, O, O, H. And why, of course, this happened? Remember, the general, the, the general formula of alkanoic acids is CN, uh, which is R represents CN, H to N plus 1. You know, that's the thing. So R will be representing that one there, and we're going to have that one as the, the this is the way we're going to present it in our practicals, in our practicals there. Now, uh, so let me take you through the chemical properties of this. Let me take you through the chemical properties of this. Uh, number one here, number one, number one. Uh, let me mention about the um, react with carbonates And hydrogen carbonates and hydrogen carbonates. Uh, to form carbon four oxide, eh? To form carbon four oxide. Now fizzing occurs. Fizzing will occur during the reaction. Fizzing occurs. Uh, fizzing occurs. I want us to get this here because this is very important. Uh, in this practicals we are interested with observations we are interested with observations and therefore phasing occurs you need to note that and alkanoic acids are the only ones that will cause this mm -hmm. they are the only ones that are responsible for causing phasing maybe uh phasing occurs uh, to to occur uh, this one of course uh, happens because of the presence of hydrogen ions remember when this ones are dissolved in water the hydrogen this hydrogen part here this hydrogen is able to ionize it is able to ionize and we are able to have the hydrogen ions react with carbonates and hydrogen carbonates to cause uh, what you call in the physics now uh, number two here uh, we can mention about they are soluble they are soluble in other words they are polar they are polar yeah this this alkanoic acid here uh, because of uh, the present is oxygen and or hydrogen here the hydrogen acquires a positive charge a partial small positive charge oxygen again acquires a negative charge and therefore it will be polar uh, it is going to be uh, polar and because water is polar what happens is the hydrogen bond is formed between the alkanoic acids and water and therefore they are able to dissolve they are actually able to dissolve now number three we can also mention about they have a ph they have a pH of less than seven, less than seven. Very important to mention there. They have a pH of less than seven. Now, most of these alkanoic acids here are weak acids. We expect them to have a pH of about four to six. They're about, but of course we have a few uh, who, which may have a pH of three, a pH of three and two. But the, the key thing here is that they're going to have a pH of less than seven and that is a thing. So, uh, we can have other indicators. You can mention about other indicators. Uh, maybe you can mention about other indicators uh, like uh, uh, litmus paper, uh, tans, blue litmus paper, uh, litmus paper, red. The, basically, as far as the alkanoic acids are concerned, as far as the alkanoic acids are concerned, they have all the properties of the acids that we mentioned in Form 1. Um, and of course, in our first topic in Form 4, we did mention maybe a bit about this. But maybe I can also mention about the react. The last one here, react with the alkanols, that is the ROH, uh, in presence, in presence of conch sulfuric, conch, uh, sulfuric acid and heat. 
these are the conditions that we require for this reaction to occur um, uh, to form a pleasant smelling substance here, a pleasant smelling substance uh, which we actually call ester. That's what we're talking about. And therefore, these are basically uh, the things that I would like you to take uh, to, to note as far as our qualitative analysis is concerned. So thank you very much. I think now we are ready to get to the practicals. Now, in my, next sec uh, in my other series, of course, I take you through now very practical and you see how do you make inferences and how you make observations. Thank you very much.